All right, so the temperature, the temperature, large F in degrees Fahrenheit of a cup of coffee two minutes after it is poured is given by the equation F of T equals 72 plus 118 E to the negative 0.093 T. To the nearest degree, what's the average temperature of the coffee between T equals zero and T equals 10 minutes? Okay, so here, this is actually just an example of the average value equation. That's basically just like the average value They just a value of the function is 1 over b minus a. It's basically 1 over the width of the interval, in this case, be 10. 1 over 10 minus 0 times the integral from 0 to 10 of f of t. The reason you multiply by 1 tenth is because you're basically um, dividing the area of that um, integral by, um, by the width. It's like, kind of like if it was a rectangle, it's just like finding like the area of a rect, getting the area of the rectangle and finding like the height from um, I should go like this to find like, you know, find the, if you have the area of the rectangle, which is this, and you want to find the height, let's say it's height and that's width, you would just divide by the width. You would divide the area by the width to get the height. And the height in this case would um, be like usually a function of x, it would be like your y value. Anyways, you can just do this um, in your calculator. So would you go ahead and we'll, um, integrate this from zero to ten? So two plus nineteen e to negative one over three x dx. Make sure I enter that correctly. Okay, then, the, then divide this by 10, or multiply by 110 to something. Yeah, 148.82, so the closest answer would be D. All right, if F prime of X equals cosine of X squared, and F of three equals seven, then F of two equals, there's a couple ways to do this. Um, what I would initially do off the top of my head is, um, if we were to integrate, when you integrate an integral, you go back to the function, so if we integrate, let's say, um, the cosine of x squared from, from, from 2 to 3. Since this is our derivative, you know, that's our derivative, we would end up getting the original function. We would use the fundamental theorem of calculus. We would get um, f of 3 or f of x from integrating from 2 to 3, so f of 3 minus f of 2. We don't even need to know the exact function because since we have our calculator, we just integrate this, we'll get some number, we set it equal to this. We know that this equals 7, so then we can solve for this value by taking away 7 and dividing by negative 1. So let's, let's go ahead, let's do that. So. Integrate this from two to three. Point two four one four oh two. Then we have that. Take away f of 3, because we know that's 7. 7 minus f of 2 equals this. Or you just add f of 2 and subtract this. That's probably going to be easier. So I'm going just, to just do um, 7 minus the point zero oh, two four one four zero oh, two. And we get about 6.97. And I, oh, I have a point oh two. That point two four one four oh two. There we go. Six point seven five eight six. That would be D. And the last one in this multiple choice section. 
we have the, the graph of H shown here, and out of these, which one has the greatest value? Okay, so this one is going to be, uh, again, like another like conceptual, really thinking one, reasoning, because um, you can't actually compute um, an equation and you know compare like actual numbers. Like, so you have to kind of get an idea of how the um, values would relate to each other. So, um, so the average value of h over negative 3 to 2. So this is the graph of h. So the graph of h is, you know, negative over here, it's positive over here, it's negative here, it's positive over here. Again, we don't know exactly, you know, those, these integrals, these, these spaces, we don't take, we actually need to because this graph makes it pretty clear that um, it's pretty clear that there's a lot more negative area and then the graph is negative for a longer time and much more extreme than it is positive here and here combined. So what I mean by that is that the average value, if you had a guess if it was positive or negative, it definitely would be negative. It definitely spends more time underneath the x-axis than above. So we'll just, so we know it's gonna be negative. The average rate of change um, one way to um, understand that is, you know, we we um, you know know that you know obviously you can't compute it. We know it's increasing here. That rate of change is positive, and it's zero, then it's negative, then it's positive. But um, the an overall way to get the average rate of change is connect the endpoints by a straight line, and the slope of that straight line with is positive. So we know overall the average rate of change is going to be positive. And just think of it intuitively. You know, if the graph ends up being larger than it is at its start, so it has, you know, have a, a larger, you know, um, it's gonna have, you know, it's gonna end up being increasing by a larger amount than it did, than it decreased over that period. Remember, rate of change is a slope of tangent lines. Um, next one, negative three to two. So we're, this is where we're going to find like an area, look at an area from negative three to two. So we would look at like you know what this you know this area, or this integral will be negative. This small integral will be positive. So we'll positive again. And here would be um, negative. And here would be positive. So again, we don't know the exact quantity, the values of those areas, but. Overall, you can say that the negative areas, these negative values by far outweigh these positive quantities. So we know that this has been negative. We don't know exact, again, we don't know exactly how much, but we know in general it's gonna be negative. Um, same thing for this. We can do that same thing. We're gonna go from negative three you know, to just zero. We compare this area to this one, and we know this is definitely more negative than this positive. This is much bigger than that one, so it's negative. And h times zero, the slope of the tangent line at zero, will be something like that. It's going downward, so that's also negative. Um, this is the way I went about this, so then I knew the answer was going to be b. That's the only positive value there.